Hi guys, this is your reading for Sunday the 14th of January. I'm still using the amazing Glastonbury Tarot, which I got at great expense here in Glastonbury because it's out of print and I had to track people down on Facebook who actually owned a pair. So this is a beautiful deck, totally worth it. Let's have a look at what the cards want you to be aware of. We've got a Jedi looking person there. Then we have the King of... Um, Vesicas, and that's the King of Pentacles, and then we have the Two of Pentacles as well. Uh, apologies if I pronounced that incorrectly, but this is the symbol that, if you come and visit Glastonbury, we've got this beautiful um, garden here called the Chalice Well, and in Glastonbury you've got two wells. You've got the Chalice Well, which is the Red Spring, and it's full of iron, so it leaves this amazing red residue everywhere. So the actual river it flows down is really red. And then across the ro road, we have the white spring, and that leaves behind this, this white kind of crystal-looking stuff. And there's a pipe going outside of the building, and it looks like little icicles. It's really pretty. So that's um, those wells. There's a whole kind of history and mythology behind them. But obviously, you know, we've got the male and female there. And it, this area is all about balance. And it's all about nature coming together with the spiritual. It's really, I can't, I should be the ambassador for Glastonbury because I absolutely love it here. I moved here and it's a gorgeous place. And if you're looking for kind of spiritual enlightenment you can always do that by yourself of course you can do that through meditation and things like that but if you ever want to visit somewhere that's super spiritual i would put glastonbury on your to-do list it's really great so we got the two of swords here which is about equilibrium then we have the king of pentacles and the two of pentacles which is about change interesting because the two of pentacles usually is about dealing with the same thing over and over again and being up and down and that being endless. So it's interesting that they've made that change. Okay, so first of all, um, we've got uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi here and he's in the middle of space and he is holding his lightsabers across his chest and the card has to do, and his eyes are closed, and the card has to do with um, not seeing things clearly. But in this case, I get the sense that he's tuning into the universe and he's He's, he's kind of drawing in this spiritual energy. The swords are the element of air and swords have to do with ideas and thoughts and thinking. So it's a beautiful depiction of this card because I've never really seen it and felt it in the way that it's been drawn here. It's really about tuning in and getting the messages that you need by connecting with a higher power. And that's really, really good to do that because by himself, he is just a man with his arms crossed and folded. He's defensive, he's closed off to anything else, and he's not really seeing what's going on. So if he weren't connecting with something greater, he would be pretty he would be a pretty isolated figure who's just kind of um, in his own head about things, who sees things in his own kind of way. And uh, this is the way we do things. This is not how we do things. And it would really put him at odds with what's going on. So it's a really good and it's a positive thing that he's connecting or striving to connect with this greater wisdom, with this higher power, because that's where the answers always come from. Not just today, but they always come from your loving higher power because it has such better plans in store for you than you could even think about. Okay, so it's okay if you're feeling somewhat defensive or somewhat rigid or somewhat um, isolated in the things that you're doing. All you have to do is take a moment and connect with the universe. You're, uh, you're really going to have a great aptitude for connecting with something bigger than yourself. And that will then inform you in terms of what practical guidance to take. And it will also prevent you from feeling alone and marginalized by yourself the next card the king of pentacles the king of pentacles rules the physical plane so he is able to manage his health he's able to manage his money he's able to move very well he's able to be creative and paint and write and express himself and sculpt and do floristry he's able to balance out and control the physical world think of him as the ultimate taurus he's in charge and he has control of the things around him. So if there are things that you need to change, first of all, you're in touch with the universe, fabulous, because that gives you 
the um, ideal kind of guidance in terms of what you're supposed to be working on today, then the King of Vesicas actually translates that spiritual information into practical action. So you can take that info and do something about it. So it can be very straightforward guidance. Tidy up your house. Okay, I will. Or um, finish uh, balancing your, you know, um, end of your taxes or whatever. Okay, I will actually do it. Finally, the two of Vesicas, like I said before, this usually has this infinity symbol. And it's about dealing with things. And by the way, this pond very much looks like the pond that we've got at the Abbey. So the Glastonbury Tour is up here. And then we have, in Glastonbury here, we have the Abbey, which is this ruin of this ancient um, giant kind of abbey, a cathedral, church. And it's so beautiful. You can go in there and they have a pond and they fixed up all the ruins and stuff and you can do sightseeing and it's really, really lovely. And the nice balance that we've got here in Glastonbury is between the pagan kind of religion of the Tor and, you know, the goddess Bridget and the Holy Grail and all of that stuff and the Lady of the Lake and, and um, Camelot kind of thing. And then we also have religion we have the church of england and we have the balance between those two which makes it so interesting if you do visit avoid the summer if you don't like a bunch of um tour uh, tourists especially um for for some reason the french school system has put glastonbury on its curriculum to take their their classes to bring them here in the summer so when you come here in the summer if you want peace and quiet you won't get that like in June, July, because there are a bunch of French kids running around. So if you like things nice and peaceful, then come earlier, like in the spring. It's kind of nice in the spring anyway, it's like March, April, starts to get sunny and dry out a little bit. Okay, so this is about change. So the actions that you take aren't just ongoing, constant uh, chores that you have to do that are never ending. The things that you take action on today will be able to affect your physical, practical life and change it in a significant way so that you can make improvements. So it's really straightforward. Listen to your guidance, take action. That action will have a positive effect on your life. So for instance, if you're being told to paint that amazing picture today, you'll have the skills and the presence of mind to do it. And that then will change your life because you'll create this masterpiece which you can then sell on and which makes a name for yourself as an artist, for example. Number-wise, we've got two and a chord card, which is one is three. And then another two is five. And five is something we had recently as well. Five in numerology is about freedom. So by doing all of these things, listening to your guidance, then taking action and letting your life be changed as a result of this action creates more freedom in your life and the freedom to choose and the freedom not to be, um, you know, be a slave to money or um, a slave to your circumstances. You can actually listen and then make changes so that you have more freedom in your life on a day to day basis. I someone recently commented on the channel that, you know, um, when I talk about money, um, it's very out of touch because we're all slaves to money. And that, is, I didn't even respond to that comment because it's that kind of thinking that will make you a slave to money. If you think you are, then you will be. We're not slaves to money. Money is an energy. And as long as you keep doing work and as long as you do things for the money, you will be a slave to money. But as soon as you listen to your guidance, which is beyond money, you know, think about think about the universe or God or the creator or whatever you want to call it. And think about how big that is and the abundance of it. Think about the ocean, how huge and endless that is. Money is nothing to that force, to that energy. So as soon as you tap into that energy, you will be you will be given guidance that allows you to take action, which is really aligned with your higher self, which really makes you someone who's in charge, someone who's able, someone who uses their God-given talents and skills. And when you do that, the side effect of using those amazing, valuable skills is money. So you're not a slave to this energy we've created here on planet Earth to exchange goods. What your responsibility is, is to actualize yourself and to take action on that amazing talent that every human being has 
And that's what's going to help you to thrive. So no, you are not someone who is a slave to money. It's the opposite. Money is here to serve you. It's not here to control your life. There's a great book on this, um, which I've recommended many, many times before, but it's the Abundance book by John Randolph Price. And it's, it says it much better than I could. And it talks about money in a spiritual way and from a spiritual perspective so that if you do feel that you know you're living your life because of money and finance and you're a slave to it read that book because it will liberate you and free you that's not the way you're meant to live your life and as if you do you will always just scrape by so that five today that we've got is about freedom and having the freedom to do things which will affect your life positively and which will bring in positive change so I hope you have a fabulous Sunday. If you would like a private reading with me, then please get in touch via my website. It's gregoryscott.com. Click on the readings tab to order your reading. And in my readings, I use the tarot and astrology and numerology. And as I always say, the um, astrology chart I can draw up by using your place of birth, date of birth, and time of birth. If you don't have the time of birth, I can use sunrise or I can rectify your chart. You send me 10 life events. So when you got married when you graduated school, when you moved country, those kind of big life events. And I can work out your time of birth if you don't have it. And the chart in itself then gives me a blueprint of your soul. It shows me what your uh, vocational aptitudes are, what your soul mission is, why you've come back into this lifetime, what's coming up for you in future in terms of relationships and love, connection with the universe, career, finance, health, family relationships, anything at all. So if you're interested in that, then please get in touch via the website. Please remember to subscribe to this YouTube channel and I'll speak to you tomorrow.